I want to come back to taking up space because I think it's such an interesting concept and it's, it's complicated. But I just want to ask you more about your childhood and your background because you've had such an unconventional journey. Mm. Yeah. Suffering from anorexia, a serious car accident, paralyzed for a year, becoming an English teacher and then being scouted in a pub. There's almost no more um, counterintuitive <laughs> journey into being a TV host, a journalist, and a presenter, and now an actor. Do yeah. you think that those quite intense experiences, and as well as your family background, have shaped you in a way that's enabled you to be this person who's really brave? There are very few people in our industry who speak the way you do. And I'm curious about how your cultural influences, your particular psychological and mental health experiences, how they've all come together to shape you in this way. I would say that there were, it's twofold. Number one is that I never planned on being in this industry. I never planned on being famous. I never planned on any of this. I thought I was going to be a classic South Asian doctor and I, uh, and I was happy with my path. This came as a surprise to me. And I think that part of what makes me perhaps dangerous to oppressive systems is the fact that I have nothing technically to lose. I love working within this industry. I love my jobs and the, the things that I get to do, but I'm also willing to walk away rather than compromise my integrity. And so because of that, it gives me this sort of, you know, it is, it, I've finally been able to shed the fear that I had when I first came in of just nothing is worth not being able to sleep at night because I know what I'm a part of and I know what I'm complicit in. And so I think the freedom of not having planned on any of this and just kind of trying like, oh, maybe I'll try radio. Maybe I'll try acting. You know, it's given me such liberty within this industry. But the other thing is that, you know, I was a child who grew up around so much devastating mental illness, who was mentally ill myself. I was a carer to about three mentally ill people from the age of about informally from the age of about nine onwards and then as a teenager formally um, I experienced disability both in hearing loss and uh, physically being unable to move and being in a wheelchair and I experienced eating disorders and I remember what it felt like to just have no one within our just no role models, no one to look up to. And I was ingesting all of the lies from this industry as if they were truth. I also ingested the erasure of South Asian people. You know, that had an impact on me. I realized that, oh, if I never see South Asians as anything other than, and I love this show, goodness gracious me, I think it's one of the funniest shows of all time. But that was our only representation before we were then allowed to be cast as terrorists <laughs> on television. So that erasure impacted me and made me hate where I was from for a really long time because I thought, well, if they never show us as the, as the hero or as the heroine or as the, you know, the protagonist, if we're always just the caricature of our people, then there must be something wrong with me. And so I should align myself either with whiteness or with blackness or with both in however I can, because it's all I was seeing, predominantly whiteness. So because I've so viscerally felt the pain of things that I've ingested from this industry, and we can't say that it's just show business, like it really permeates our culture. You can really see it in the new generation. And so I will be damned if I don't do everything in my power where I'm, I'm so lucky to be on the inside to make sure that the next generation don't suffer the way that I do, the way that they never saw celebrities even mess up. I'm willing to make mistakes and learn publicly and show my workings out uh, as a public figure because that was another thing that I didn't see. I, you know, we just saw this kind of just perfection. We were bombarded with the perfection of people in the public eye. And I think that's also really toxic. So I'm just trying to be what I needed when I was 12. And that's really all I can do. I'm not an expert in anything. <laughs> and I've heard you saying to Christian Guru Murthy, for example, that growing up seeing him, and I think it was Connie Hart was the other person of <laughs> South Asian heritage, the only ones really that were on mainstream TV in the 90s when you were growing up and how that impacted you just to have somebody who you felt had some, something in common with your heritage. How conscious a part of going into TV was it for you that you wanted to be representative that you wanted to reach a younger you or that you wanted to bring your heritage and culture was that incidental to the things that you wanted to do yeah and you know like my 
my agent who you would have met at the very beginning before we started this I, i've been with her from day dot of my career and one of when she asked me she was like what do you want to achieve like what do you want to do in this industry and i was like i really want to help people and i really want to make documentaries and i really want to uncover the truth in this world and so you know at 22 i had a very strong sense of what i wanted to achieve i didn't i didn't I've never cared about being popular. I was so fucking unpopular at school that it has trained me to not expect to be liked, never mind loved by strangers. And so that is another incredibly powerful tool, especially as a woman, you know, where whether we are in this industry or not, we are conditioned from such a young age to be likable, to not be difficult, to smile, you know, for me to not feel confined by that expectation has also been part of me being such a, you know, a loose cannon <laughs> for better or worse. Afwa. <laughs> um, the the things that I have achieved that have been positive have been because of the fact that I'm, you know, I'm okay being disapproved of, you know, as long as I know that I'm working every day to get better and be better. The way that the old guard, I suppose, if you can characterize like that, perceive you, is, it seems quite nuanced to me because clearly you're threatening because you're not willing to shrink yourself in the ways that women are expected to, people of Asian heritage or visible minorities are expected to. But you're also um, othered in a specific way. Like I often feel that you're kind of racial, you're not racialized in a very clear way and it kind of feeds into lots of other prejudice towards you, whether it's you talking about your body image or your mental health or your sexuality. It, it's, um, it's quite hard to unpick sometimes. What's your analysis of the ways in which you are categorized by the mainstream, and especially that generation of older white men who feel very personally triggered clearly by you having the audacity to be yourself on TV? Well, I think the industry, like I said, loves to box women in particular. You know, I think generally we box people. We're just like, okay, you've come in doing that. So that's now going to be what you do forever until you die uh, or you leave this industry. And so, you know, so, and I feel like that is very UK specific. Again, I love the UK TV and film industry, but we still have a way to go when it comes to being able to understand that human beings are multifaceted. We are diverse individuals, not just, you know, on the outside, but also within each of ourselves. And so I think that because I am impossible to pigeonhole, because every time you think you know what I am, I go and shift gears and start a whole new career, like leaving television in 2012, going into radio, moving from radio into like writing and DJing and then going over to America as a writer, becoming an actress and then kind of moving into sort of a more global form of mainstream activism. It's just, it's impossible to, I don't know what I am. So why should anyone else? And I am disobedient. I am rebellious. And I also talk back and I'm so unafraid. I'm so unafraid of other people's opinions. And so therefore it's, you know, I'm, I'm a scary prospect for, a, for the patriarchy within this industry. And let's be honest, this is still a patriarchy run industry by the vast majority um, in both the US and the UK, but in particular in the UK. And I think that I am potentially, you know, inspiring other women, both within and without and outside of this industry to start speaking up and calling shit out and questioning the system and questioning each other and questioning other powerful celebrities within this industry. It's, I think that there is a, there is an endless pattern of us doing this to women where we, we, take a strong, outspoken, powerful woman and we will go out of our way to destroy her, to discredit her. You know, we can't kill threatening women anymore. So we just kill their reputation. We kill their credibility. And so because of that, they, they will go so far out of their way to like find old things that we did or find or just spread rumors and so many malicious lies and the way that the media will just pick it up and eat it up and they'll find it so delicious. We love the scandal of a woman, of the fallen woman. We love to like build a woman up, build a woman up, build a woman up, hyperbolize how amazing she is, pop her on a pedestal, which is actually just a trap door that leads down into <laughs> often a gutter of shit. Um, and we do that not only to teach that woman a lesson, but mostly to send a kind of warning shot out to all other women who are witnessing her rise to say, do not stick your neck out or we will cut your head off. And so, you know, you and I have spoken before about this and the fact that I 
feel as though a lot of women actually cancel themselves. You know, when they receive that backlash and that onslaught, they just sort of withdraw to either protect their mental health or because they're like, oh, no one likes me anymore. I should go away. And if I go away, then I am sending a message out to all other young women who have watched the things that I have accomplished that have been progressive for my gender. And they will think, oh, it's not worth it. And it is worth it. It's hard, but it is worth it. And truly, they're just giving you the sort of rope to hang yourself. You can make that choice more often than not, to not disappear and to keep fighting.